Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed my Cubase 10 tips and tricks part one. This is part two, let's do it. Hi guys, Jay here from borntobroof.com and welcome to another Cubase tips and tricks. This is part two and this one is gonna be based mainly in the mixer window. So let's get on with it. My first tip is a new one in Cubase 10, which is snapshots. So you can actually try out different mixes as you go. So for example, you might wanna have your mixer faders in this position. You may wanna have panning over here. You may wanna have various plugins, etc., etc., etc. And so what you wanna do is just save that. So just come up to the sort of camera icon and you can see that it's saved that. So let's go, we wanna try different mix i'm not sure about that mix so let's just have this down this up this down pan this over try a different plug in you know whatever and let's just save that one because i want to flip between the two so the snapshot one snapshot two uh let's say oh i don't like that mix i want to go back to snapshot one easily done down arrow recall snapshot one and there you go plugins gone all the faders are back to normal etc etc so that's really really useful in cubase 10. now that's not to be confused with history history is every little thing you do in the mixer like this fader you can see they're all coming up on the bottom here and you can undo this at any time with these buttons here which is really useful so if you do do a few series of commands and you don't like it you can just undo several times or obviously you can just go back to any point in time just by clicking on it over here. Now one thing to note is the mixer snapshots, just going back to that briefly, if you save the project and come out of it, then they will be there next time you load the project back up, but the history does not save. So that really only works on your live session that you're currently working on. So just something to note there. Okay, so now to copying over plugins. If you just click and drag it, then it just moves it. Just undo that. If you hold down Alt and drag, it copies it to the next or wherever you place it. Just gonna undo that. If you copy the inserts tab at the top, it copies the whole lot. Really useful. If you click and drag the audio track over, you not only get copy of the plugins, you get the settings as well, like pan and volume. So let's just put this one back to zero. Leave that one on left. Put the volume down here. Uh, let's just copy the settings from this audio three to instrument. And there we go. It's matched the volume, the pan, and the plugins. So that's really, really useful. If you want to open a single plugin, obviously you click the E there on the plugin itself. But if you want to open all of the plugins at once, hold down Alt, Shift, and click the E button there. And there we have all three. What that's actually doing is doing a quick link, which I'm going to touch on again in a second. So as you can see, holding down Alt and Shift temporarily does quick link. So to clear all the plugins at once, rather than going individually and do no effect, no effect, no effect, just right click the inserts tab and do clear. Simple as that. And you can load or save an effects chain with this button here, so you can load an effects chain, let's just say hit it, run snare, whatever it might be, and you get all these plugins loaded up all at once, which is a massive time saver. And of course, you can fiddle with these and change them all, and then just save your own, and then you can obviously call that up later on. So don't forget that one, that's a real massive time saver. So yeah, as I touched upon Quick Link, uh, let's just go back to that now. So you probably know, you can just highlight, let's say, these three audio tracks for example click quick link and you've quickly linked these together so for example the volume you know the panning whatever control click to get that back to where it was but you don't have to actually come up here and click this button you can hold down alt and shift so that's really really handy as well it's another little time saver for you so let's just say you want to send all of these to a you know a send bus so either Click the button up here or hold down Alt and Shift and just find any old bus just for demonstration purposes. Switch it on 
and just send them all at once, which is a huge time saver. And let's just say your quick link is on up here. And if you want to temporarily suspend it for a moment, like you can come over here and press suspend, but you might as well just while you're down here, press alt quickly. So let's just say you wanted to adjust the volume on this without adjusting the rest. So this middle one, so just hold down alt that temporarily suspends the cue link and you can just adjust the middle one down, let go, and now you're back to controlling all three again. So that's another little useful one. And whilst Quick Link is down, you can also load multiple plugins. So let's just say, I don't know, you want a compressor on all of them, or a tube compressor, let's say. And as you can see, as they're linked together, tube compressor is on all three. And another thing to note that if you've got them all linked, as we have, you can, whatever you do on one, affects the other, or the others. So if you want to just reduce the mix slightly or whatever, it's doing them on all three, as long as they're linked. Obviously just come and unlink them if you want to change the parameters individually. And still within linking, we have also normal link as opposed to quick link, and you get a little bit more control under normal link. So if you press the link button here, you can now decide what parameters you want to link. So you might you may not want pan or volume or sends or mute, whatever. So you can just tick your boxes here as to what you want linked. So let's say you want to send these three or four tracks to a group. Now, if you send them to a normal group, let's just do it. Right click, add group channel to selected channels. But your volume here is the main overall volume. The individual phases don't move. So let's just undo that. What you can do is add a VCA fader, this time right click add VCA fader, and this time it will reduce the individual faders but keep their relative positions. So that's a really handy one as well. Again, just undo that. But there's an even easier way to do that without adding the VCA fader, just Alt and Shift again, and you can use one of the faders to control the others and keeping their relative positions. Another little useful tip there for you. And that means that, you know, you're doing it temporarily in the cue link again, you can just come down and move one of these and then you can go back again to cue link and use these like a VCA fader. So it's, it's a good way of flicking between link and unlink. Now, this is an obvious one, but some people may not know. Uh, so I'll say it anyway. You can obviously come in and bypass your effects so you can really, really see what effect they're actually having on your audio and whether what you're doing is any good or not. But you can also A, B, which is quite useful. So you've got A, let's just say you've got a, you know, more of a dry signal, less output, less tail on this reverb, more pre-delay, for example. And let's say you want to just compare it with another version with more tail, more wet signal, more output, less pre-delay, whatever it might be, you know. And you can just quickly flip between the two, which is really, really great for comparing and auditioning different reverb sounds or whatever the plugin is. It doesn't matter what the plugin is. So A and B, that's really useful. And bypass is obviously useful as well. So that's pretty much it for my mixer tips. I've just got a couple more just following on from part one of this video. Okay, so you probably know about core pads and the fact that you can just drag them from the lower zone into your window there like that. Let's just bring that down a bit. And you have your ready-made chords ready to go. But you can also do this within the MIDI window. So let's just get rid of all those notes there. And rather than try to program in a C major or whatever you want to program in, you can just do it on the left-hand side here under chord editing. So let's say you want a C major. All you've got to do now is click that button there and it will automatically draw you in a chord. Or let's say you want, I don't know, this time you want a suspended too. Or actually, it's changed it for you without me having to draw it. Or you can change it. Or if you want four note chords, you can draw in four note chord. Okay, so you get the idea. But that's a great way if you're not too hot on music theory, then you can do that. Uh, just a general one, if you hold down shift 
and scroll, you can scroll left or right in the project. A really, really useful one that rather than keep coming down here and fiddling around with this thing down here, which is a nightmare. Uh, you probably also know within Cubase 10, you can now drag and drop your VST instruments into a track. And if you haven't got a picture of it, first of all, we're just going to drop it in and it will load a VST instrument track. And if you haven't got a picture of it down the right hand side here, just click this camera icon and there it is. It now remembers the picture for next time. So that's really, really useful. Nearly at the end now, just going to do a keyboard shortcut and a keyboard macro because someone the other day asked us how to scroll between quantize settings with a keyboard control. Obviously, you can't do that at the moment, but we can easily set this up. So let's do that. So let's go to edit, key commands, and all we've got to do is search for quantize in the top here and click this magnifying glass here to search. And we just need to find next quantize. There it is. Select next quantize. So what you do is you come over here and you type in a key that you may want, but if it comes up with something already assigned, then obviously you can't use that. So there's not many keys on the keyboard that are unassigned, but if you use like Shift and Alt or something like that and the key you want, that would probably work. But let's just do like up and down keys because I think up and down keys would be quite useful scrolling through the quantize so i want down but that's obviously assigned to something else so let's just do alt and down and yet yeah, there's nothing assigned to it so what you need to do is just press assign there and you can see that alt down is now assigned to next quantize so if you want to do previous let's do alt and up you must click this button here otherwise nothing's going to happen and press ok so now if you watch the quantize settings up here and I do Alt and down, I can now scroll between all the different quantized settings. So that's really awesome stuff. Thank you, Jason, well done. So here's another great keyboard shortcut you can set up. I mean, we've already got T, which is add track, which saves you going, going over to the plus button, whatever. But let's go one step further, make this even better. Edit, key commands, add track, you can see, is uh, got T assigned to it. But let's just say you want to add a stereo track there or a mono track there and obviously just type in the key you want so let's do i don't know alt and t something like that don't forget to click assign and now when we press alt and t you just get a track straight away so you haven't even bothered got to go into plus or right click add track and all that malarkey it just does it for you now even even better than that Let's say you're working on vocals uh, and you want several tracks. So let's set up a macro. Your macros are here. These are the ones that are already made up and ready to go. So let's just do a macro, which is, if you don't know what a macro is, it's a, a number of commands all done in a fixed order, which get a job done for you very, very quickly at the touch of one button. So there's like a million things you can, get, you can do here. And there's a couple of good view, uh, YouTube videos about macros, but let's just do something quick here. First of all, show macros new macro and i'm going to do three audio tracks obviously this can be anything you like it can be more than three or it can be whatever it is you want to do and i want to add a mono track so add command and i want to add command again and i want to add command again so i've got three audio mono tracks and i also want to record enable so i'm just going to search on record enable click the magnifying glass Activate record enable for all audio tracks. So add command, and this is my sequence here. So it's a very simple sequence. It's only adding three mono tracks and record enables. The sequence can be as long as you want it to be. But now we need to assign a key to this. And the way to do this is you have to go to the macro folder, click on the three audio tracks, and then you assign the key. So let's say control shift t now that one's being used as you can see so let's try control alt and t and that's being used as well so let's just choose one that i know isn't actually being used and that is y press assign and there it is y so click okay so let's say you've got you're recording a vocalist and you suddenly need quickly some more audio tracks let's just delete all these other tracks for a second okay so you've got a vocalist in 
you need some tracks very, very quickly. So hit Y. So there we have three very, very quick mono tracks set up for you with record enable on all three as well. So that is a huge, huge time saver. So let's just finish on workspaces. You, you may know how to do this already, but let's just say you want to have different workspaces for different things. So let's say you're working on the arrangement window like we've got here or the project window, and you may want it to be really big. So let's turn off the right zone, make the left really big, maybe turn off the left zone as well, possibly. And let's just say you need a really, really big space to edit. So come to workspaces, add workspace, edit, call it edit or something like that. And now we have it here under workspaces. So let's just set up another one. Let's turn on our zones, bring this back. And let's say we want the mixer in the lower zone. And let's say we want more mixer than anything else. Let's just say for example. So let's just call this add workspace. So let's call this, I don't know, mixer and edit something like that. And now you can flip between these workspaces whenever you want. And you don't have to come up here each time. You can see Alt and number three, which is on your number pad, or Alt and number four. There you go. You can just quickly flip between the two like that. So that's another really useful thing. You can also, if you want to just update your existing workspace, just change it slightly and just go to Update Workspace or Alt and New. Okay, guys, that's it for my tips and tricks part two. I really, really hope this has been useful for you. Please do like the video with a thumbs up and please subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our future super useful Cubase tutorials. And if you are interested in making a track from absolutely nothing in Cubase 10 to the final mix down and master and everything in between, we have a brand new beginners course out right now. It's super, super cheap at the moment and you can watch the first four lessons absolutely free of charge. So make sure you click the link below to go and check that out. Thanks for watching guys. All the very best. I'm Jay from bornproduce.com and I'll see you on the next one. See you later.